Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Death Auto channel, where we talk about that most wonderful of science fiction subgenres, steampunk. We do news, we do reviews, we do other issues of interest to steampunk aficionados. Today I'm going to be talking about the top comics or graphic novels in the steampunk genre. Now, I only have a top eight because I haven't had access to quite as many of uh, the, the comic form, format as I have, quite as many in the com, comics medium as I have in the regular printed word. I've read at least at least 50 in, uh, of regular steampunk novels. But nonetheless, there's some pretty cool stuff in comics out there, and if any of you know of stuff that I missed, please let me know, and maybe I can round off the list, list to 10. For now, we have my top eight, and we start with number eight, Steam Detectives by Kia Asamiya, a Japanese creator. This is, a, this is a manga written in 1995, or started in 1995, and it's a lot of fun. It's very campy, uh, very kind of melodramatic adventure. It stars this uh, young boy detective, Narutaki. His uh, backstory is a lot like Batman. His, he's wealthy, his parents were murdered, he's a crime fighter, and he has a butler who helps him out. <laughs> And who helps him out a lot, just like just like Batman had. His uh, his sidekick is not a boy, but it's this nurse called Ling Ling, this very pretty blonde nurse, who, despite her Chinese name, as I said, is is a blonde, and she always wears a nurse's uniform. Considering it's manga, that's probably because it's sexy. And they have a lot of a very crazy battles with giant robots and, and weird villains with weird names like Dr. Guilty. And one of them even has a, has a nurse sidekick that they call Lang Lang. <laughs> so it's, it, I recommend it. It's fun. And uh, I would give it about three and a half gears. And uh, there's an anime version that unfortunately wasn't as good. I thought it was a little too silly. It didn't quite capture the dark tone of this, of this, you know, Steam City, which has all this smoke, which is why it is, it's a place where crime abounds because of the steam and so on, <laughs> the smoke. Uh, number seven. This is an interesting one. This is one is quite new. It, it just came out this year. It's called Clockwork Dancer. It's by a science fiction writer from California named John De La Rose. And he has already, he has published se several um, science fiction novels in uh, the YA uh, subcategory. Uh, the Baron Von Monocle series, it's a fun series, very good for for young adults and uh, and this he this is not his first foray into comics. He's done some superhero comics as well. Um, he writes the story, this the um, uh, the uh, artist is Mary MacArthur here and it's it's kind of interesting that it's got kind of a simplistic art style and uh, it involves this um, British inventor who has this uh, clockwork doll, basically. And she has, can do all these things. She can walk and talk. She can fly, as with that um, helicopter uh, thing that pops out of her back. And they're fleeing from the law because in this reality, it's making an, automa an automaton, excuse me, in the image of a human is considered blasphemous and... Uh, the church doesn't like it, so they have to flee. And I hope he does more of this because it's it's cool. It's kind of a simple story, but it's fun. And kind of a good theme of inventiveness versus oppression, that kind of thing. Number seven, Adventures of the 19XX. Interesting title. Uh, this is, strictly speaking, it's not a steampunk. It's more of a diesel punk because it takes place in the 1930s, and it's got a very Raiders of the Lost, Lost Ark feel to it. And... Uh, the, author, the creator is um, Paul Roman Martinez, a uh, cartoonist, and uh, another, another um, writer, another creator of Hispanic uh, culture here. So we can see that steampunk is not all an Anglo thing. This book was made in 2011, and it's based on his website, uh, the19xx.com, in which he has the crew of this airship, the Car Carpathian, they have all these adventures and they fight bad guys and there's a lot of occult mysticism as, you know, kind of reminiscent of, of the Lost Ark. 
and there's diverse characters, and uh, you know we have a Haitian, we have a, I no, she's New Orleans voodoo princess is one of the one of the gals, and it's very interesting, very very a lot of fun. The com the art is a little clip arty. It's not it's not the most realistic art, but in a way that's good because it sometimes really realistic art makes it a little hard to see what the action is happening. And it follows the protagonist of the young boy whom they call Kid, who is joining the crew of the Carpathian and is gets to travel the world and, and fight bad guys. Number five, Girl Genius. This was recommended by a friend. I actually hadn't encountered this. It's by um, it's by Phil and Kaja. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. Phil and Kaja Foglio, a married couple that um, write and illustrate this. And this is Agatha Heterodyne, the, the protagonist. She's a girl inventor. She likes to make these little robots called Clanks. And uh, let's see, it's uh, kind of a sepia tone and it takes place in this kind of, a, kind of like a little German village type place. And uh, there's, there's some bad guys after, after her Clank. And uh, she's uh, she's not a Mary Sue by any means. She's kind of a, she's kind of clumsy, and uh, a little bit absent-minded, which is part of the reason that makes her character so much fun. And uh, definitely, definitely recommend that one too. I would give that one about probably about four gears. I need to keep rating these things. Number four, Hollow Fields. Now this looks like a manga, and I guess it is, but the creator, whose name is Madeline Roska, and she published this in 2009, it's a compilation of quite a few issues, it's huge. Um, she's Australian, and she did the art and the story, and like a typical manga, it is opens from the back. You can see. And, uh, and interestingly enough, Steam City, which I showed, or Steam Detective, which I showed you earlier, is done in the American style of uh, where the uh, cover is on the left, not on the right. And so it involves a, um, the character, the protagonist is a young girl named Lucy Snow. She's adorable. She's a little, she's a little bumbly. Uh, and uh, she is sent away to boarding school. She accidentally goes to the wrong school, Hollow Fields, which is a school for mad scientists or for the children of mad scientists and it's very it's a very scary school because if you don't do well you get sent to the windmill and you never come back and uh, you think she's doomed but this magical talking box starts helping her and they the the, the uh, teachers are all kind of look like zombies like they're all all been like they're all like 200 years old and they're keeping themselves alive by clockwork it's it's very very inventive and fun highly recommended it this is like, that's like getting up in the gears to like five gears because it's so good. Number three, Boston Metaphysical Society. Now I've talked about this in my top 10 steampunk novels. And uh, this is, this is my number three. So it's a little higher on my scale of, of uh, graphic novels. And this in, involves, it takes place in alternate USA history called the Great States of America, where the U.S. is dominated by powerful families, kind of like Renaissance Italy or feudal Japan. And the protagonist is, um, is Samuel Hunter, and he's a former Pinkerton detective who's got his own agency now, and he's got a troubled past. And his, uh, this is his associate, um, the inventor, uh, Granville Woods, the um, African American fellow here, and then this lovely redhead is uh, his his um, assistant, Caitlin O'Sullivan, um, who happens to be a spiritualist and a medium, which is ironic because his his uh, dearly departed wife was also a medium, who uh, perished because of evil spirits and so on. And it's got historical characters like uh, Tesla and Edison in it. I really love it, and it's. Got a lot of great adventure, and the um, incorporation of history is really cool. 
Number two, we can't have a list of great graphic novels without including Alan Moore. I mean, Alan Moore, who created such great things as uh, V for Vendetta and uh, and Watchmen and the Watchmen. So this is and this is the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen by Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill. And the great, great premise of this book is that it incorporates fictional characters from Victorian literature and brings them all together in one book. Now, unfortunately it doesn't have Sherlock Holmes in it because I guess there was some kind of a... He had some copyright issues, but it's got a lot of interesting, interesting people in it anyway. Alan Quartermain, who is like an adventurer, and uh, Captain Nemo, and uh, the Invisible Man, uh, Dr. Jekyll, and a character named Wilmina Murray had to have a have a woman, and I believe she's from the novel Dracula. Now, the movie version starring um, Sean Connery was a bit of a stinker. It just didn't do justice, and for whatever reason, I mean, they they were a little too silly. And for example, they made they made Wilhelmina into a so that she was a vampire herself, which I don't. I didn't like that, and and uh, it's just it just didn't work. Just what wasn't good. I mean, this I would give five gears. That one, the movie, I'd probably give about two and a half. Just not not a good representation. And and of course, pretty much everything that um, pretty much everything Alan Moore does gets made into a movie. And every time it does, he always distances himself because oh, I don't like that. They didn't do justice to my vision. Well, I, I think in this case he was definitely right. Number one, number one, and I have talked about this before. Lantern City. Now this, notice I've got these wonderful hardcovers. They're really nice, and the art style is very dark. Can you imagine how much ink they used on here? Look at all this dark and black, you know, dark colors all over the place. Not a lot of white background. And there's and I've got the first three volumes, which are all available in hardcover, and it it concerns a fantasy. It's a fantasy steampunk. It's a fictional city called Lantern City, and which has a very it's kind of dystopian. It has a very rich class and a very poor class, and they have steam power, and they have all these mills that are very dangerous, and the poor have to work in there and slave away. Now this was this was supposed to be a this was supposed to be a TV series, and uh, this particular thing it was created by Trevor Crafts, and the main creative forces were Matthew Daly and Bruce, Bruce Boxleitner. That's right, Bruce Boxleitner, the actor who was was in Babylon 5 and a number of other shows. And uh, I also recently encountered an audiobook prequel uh, to this called Arise, which is pretty interesting, but not you know, not nearly as good as this is. This is this is an, the the um, protagonist is a guy named Sander, and he's um, he's a poor fellow, poor just a poor worker, and he he uh, gets caught up in a riot, and in order to escape, because he's worried about being taken away and disappeared into the prisons, he takes on the uniform of a dead policeman who was killed in the riot. And they have these helmets that, that obscure their face, so he gets away with it. And it turns out, through a twist of fate, he, as a, while impersonating a policeman, he saves the life of Dorian Gray, who is the very wealthy, wealthy man who rules Lantern City. Dorian discovers Sander's secret, and in gratitude, he makes Sander his personal bodyguard. And there's and so Sander has hopes of, of righting the wrongs and, and reforming his city. But of course, things aren't as easy as they sound, and, and uh, Dorian Gray may not be as straight, may not be as honest as, he, as uh, Sander hopes he is. So I definitely highly recommend this, Five Gears. So there we have it. Top eight graphic novels and comics involving steampunk. I would definitely recommend any of those. Like I said, my, my ratings go from the first ones, is more like three and a half gears. Uh, we proceed four, four and a half, and 
Finally, the top few, like the last four, are all five gears because they're really fantastic. And so let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Please like and subscribe because it really helps us a lot. And we want to spread the word about steampunk. And for, for now, this is Vaughn Troy, the Steampunk Desperado, saying, Adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.